Do you know how much the most expensive painting, Mona Lisa, was sold for? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Isabel. Today, I am pleased to share with you my presentation about the most famous artist of all time. Art comes in many forms and types, such as painting, sculptures, music, photography, performing, and crafts. But today, I will be sharing with you three of my favorite artists who majored mainly in painting and sculpture, and why they became famous in art history. What is art? Art has many meanings. It's an activity that demonstrates your skill and imagination. Does art have a purpose? The purpose of art is self-expression. It is also a form of communication, expressing some of the ideas ideas and feelings. It can make a political statement, a religious statement, or even a whimsical statement. Art is very personal and evokes different feelings in different people. Does all art have to be beautiful? Well, that's up to you. Like I said earlier, art is very personal and is subjective. Some people think it's beautiful or special while others might think it's weird and different. Sometimes it looks different depending on how you feel at that time while looking at the piece of art. For example, this painting is called the Composition 2, painted in 1930 by Piet Mondrian. Now look at the painting on the right, which I recreated myself. It looks similar, right? But the difference is that the first one was sold for 50.6 million in New York City. And I'm waiting for offers for my painting. Any bidders? Now let's talk about the styles of art. First, there's abstract art. Abstract art is modern art, which doesn't represent images of our everyday work. It has color, lines, and shapes, but they don't represent objects or living things. Modernism. Modernism was a cultural movement of the late 19th century to the mid 20th century. It changed art, literature, music, architecture, and drama. Modernism rejected tradition. It was interested in new ways of doing old things. Cubism. Cubism is a style of art which aims to show all of the possible viewpoints of a person or an object all at once. It is called cubism because the items represented in the artworks look like they are made out of cubes and other shapes. Pop art. Pop art is a style of art based on simple, bold images of everyday items painted in bright colors. Pop artists created pictures of product labels and packaging, photos of celebrities, comic strips, and animals. Landscape. Landscape art is a picture of natural scenery such as mountains, rivers, trees, and forests, especially where the main subject is a wide view. Moving on, I'll share with you three of my favorite artists, all unique in their own ways. This is Claude Monet. He was well known for being a rebel. He likes capturing impressions of what he sees. His first impression painting was Impression Sunrise, where he was trying to capture what the sunrise looked like. This was how he and his group of fellow painters, Pissarro, Cassatt, Degas, Morisot, Sisley, and Renoir, were known as the Impressionists. Impressionism is a style of painting that began in the early 1860s when artists started creating, artists started painting outside rather than in their studios. They wanted to capture real-time moments of everyday life that they see in front of them. Today, Impressionism is a well-respected art movement that is recognized as changing the history of art forever. These are some of the popular works of Monet, where he painted landscapes. Mules. It means haystacks, which was sold for $110 million. Water lilies in bloom, sold for $84 million and Water Lily Pond, sold for $80 million. Pablo Picasso is one of the most famous artists in the 20th century. 
He could draw and paint just about anything in any style. He was born in Spain but moved to Paris when he was 23 years old because Paris is the capital of art. He liked trying out new ideas and Picasso helped see the world in new ways. One of his most famous periods is Cubism, where he painted an object, like a bottle, from lots of different angles in one same picture. So you see the front, back and sides of the bottle at the same time. It's like having x-ray eyes. Guernica is one of Picasso's best known works, regarded by art critics as the most moving and powerful anti-war painting. The old guitarist is a painting of an old haggard man that represented a great deal of sorrow and grief of the working class society. From age 15 to 90, Picasso painted 14 self-portraits, which are drastically different, showing his evolution of styles and artistic innovations. Still life with the cane chair seems like a mishmash of forms instead of a clear picture with a college of materials, such as oil, oil cloths, wood grains, and rope. Picasso wanted people to, rem to remember that the painting is something different from that which it represents. Jackson Pollock majors in action painting, where he would move very fast across paintings, dribbling the paint in long, wobbly lines, or sometimes he throws the paint onto the canvas. He's an abstract expressionist artist who made paintings that don't look like anything. Instead, it's a communication of his emotions in expressive marks and his drawings and paintings. Pollock died at 44 years old, but his work continues to inspire artists from all over the world to experiment and invent new ways of painting. Blue Poles was painted when Pollock was severely depressed. Mural. This was the painting that Pollock had to remove a wall in his home to fit the canvas in. Number five. The first painting was sold for $1,500. But somehow during the moving process, it was damaged. Pollock offered to rework the painting, but he repainted the whole thing again. It is now worth $140 million. The blue Moby Dick is unlike Pollock's usual drip techniques. It has one clear, it has some clear imagery and symbols. As it was said, he was going undergoing treatment to help with his alcoholism, which provided some of the inspiration for his paintings. So what makes these artists so famous? Why do they stand out? I think they're famous because they challenged the status quo and created history in art. They were not afraid to be different and to explore the innovations in styles and bring about the new ideas and creations in art. However, many artists don't become famous for deviating from tradition. It takes time for people to learn to appreciate change and newness. For example, Van Gogh and Monet are underappreciated in their lifetime, only to become famous after their deaths. There's no clear way of how to find fame in an artist, though it seems a combination of skill, imagination, cultural readiness, and a little bit of luck. I will end this with a quote by Henry Matisse, Creativity takes courage. All three of the artists I shared today had one thing in common. They were not afraid to challenge the status quo and deviate from tradition. If Monet hadn't rebelled, he wouldn't be able to paint how he wanted to and create impressionism and change the course of art history. Picasso not only allowed himself to experiment, but he continuously learned and evolved with time and created many different periods of art history. Polo invented a new way of painting that inspired artists all over the world. I hope this inspires you to always raise the bar and have the courage to challenge the status quo. Thank you.